Seller concessions are back. They were gone for a while. Flashback to spring of 2022. Mortgage rates were under 5%, under 4% in some cases. Homes were selling in their first weekend on the market and drawing in multiple offers, bidding wars. Buyers gave up everything to win the house. Wave inspections, zero closing costs, appraisal gaps. Now, back to the present. We are en route to a balanced market due to an increase in interest rates paired with a persistent low inventory of homes for sale. As a realtor in North Metro Atlanta, I'm seeing a resurgence of seller concessions in purchase and sale agreements. Buyers and sellers both need to familiarize themselves with the concept of seller concessions because they play a key role in the negotiations on the purchase of a property. In this video, I'll share all there is to know about seller concessions so you know what to expect the next time you buy or sell a home. First, what do I mean by seller concessions? Seller concessions, also known as seller contributions, are when the seller of a property agrees to pay for some of the buyer's closing costs or other expenses related to the purchase of the, the property. These concessions are typically negotiated during the real estate transaction and can help the buyer save money on upfront costs. What does that negotiation process look like? Here are some steps to consider when negotiating seller concessions. Identify your needs. For buyers, determine what concessions you need from the seller, such as assistance with closing costs or repairs, and be prepared to discuss these needs during negotiations. For sellers, determine what your bottom line is like as far as what you want or need to net at closing from the sale of your property. Do your research. With your realtor's help, learn more about the local real estate market to see what other homes have sold for and with what concessions. Make an offer. The buyers will make an initial offer that includes the concessions they are requesting. The sellers can either accept, reject, or submit a counter offer. Be willing to compromise. Negotiations may involve some back and forth, so both buyers and sellers should be prepared to compromise and adjust an offer or counter offer to what they are comfortable with. Keep in mind that negotiations may pick up again following a home inspection in the event the buyer wants to request repair or concession credits. Work with your real estate agent. A skilled real estate agent can be an invaluable asset during the negotiation process. They can help you navigate the negotiation process and ensure that your interests are represented. Put everything in writing. Once a deal has been reached, make sure to get all of the concessions in writing and included in the purchase and sale agreement. Overall, negotiating seller concessions requires a combination of research, communication, and compromise. By being prepared and working with a skilled agent, you can increase your chances of reaching a meeting of the minds. Seller concessions can take many forms, such as paying for closing costs. The seller may agree to pay a portion or all of the buyer's closing costs, which can include things like loan origination fees, title insurance, and appraisal fees. The seller may agree to provide a credit towards repairs or upgrades needed on the property as a condition of the sale. The seller may offer to purchase a home warranty for the buyer, which can help cover the cost of repairs or replacements for certain appliances or systems in the home. Another seller concession is when the seller agrees to pay for prepaid expenses, such as property taxes or homeowner's insurance, for a specific period of time. It's important to note that the specific concessions that may be available will depend on the terms of the transaction and the negotiation between the buyer and seller, along with what the loan terms permit. Know that there are limits to how much a seller can contribute towards a buyer's closing costs. These limits are determined by the type of mortgage being used, the loan to value ratio, and other factors. Some of the most common concessions that I'm seeing in today's market include things like 
uh, contribution from the sellers towards the buyer's closing costs. You know, we didn't see that at all last year. There were very few concessions, but this year I am seeing a, a bigger expectation and need for sellers to be willing to contribute towards the buyer closing costs to keep the, to, to make the deal work. Plus, we are often seeing uh, concessions regarding repairs. Now, you know, when you walk through a house in the beginning, you know whether it's been recently updated or not. So if you want money towards renovations, you better ask for it initially in the offer. But if you, if you are aware of renovations you would want to do to make it personally more desirable to you, uh, the thing that you're going to find in the inspection negotiation is more dealing with repairs. Uh, whether you want the seller to address some of those repairs or you're looking for a concession regarding those particular defects so that you can choose your own contractor after the closing. So I, those are the most common kinds of things. Uh, at this moment in time, if uh, buyers and sellers are sort of uh, negotiating in the very early process of selling a home, sometimes I'm still seeing the buyer, I mean the seller be able to retain some temporary occupancy at favorable terms after the closing to make the possession timeline work out better. So we're seeing kind of things in favor of the seller and the buyer, just depending on the house, the location, and the needs of the buyers and sellers. Seller concessions are typically shown on the closing disclosure, which is a document that outlines all of the final terms of the real estate transaction. The closing disclosure is provided to the buyer at least three business days before the closing date. The seller concessions are listed as a credit to the buyer and are typically shown as a lump sum. The amount of the seller concessions is deducted from the total amount of funds the buyer needs to bring to the closing table, which can include the down payment, closing costs, and other fees. For example, if a buyer's closing costs are $10,000 and the seller agrees to pay $5,000 in concessions, the closing disclosure will show a credit of $5,000 to the buyer. This credit will reduce the amount of funds the buyer needs to bring to closing from $10,000 to $5,000 for those closing costs. It's important for buyers to review the closing disclosure carefully to ensure that all of the terms of the transaction are accurate and that the seller concessions are properly reflected. If there are any discrepancies or errors, the buyer should bring them to the attention of their real estate agent or attorney as soon as possible. As I mentioned at the top of this video, I am seeing more and more negotiations and seller concessions in contracts, and it's important for both parties to be well informed for a smooth transaction. It's also important to work with a trusted real estate professional because we are your advocate at every step of the process. Thank you for watching. I'm Cindy Bunch with the Bunch team at Keller Williams, and we want to set you up for home buying and selling success.